After the mountain slash glacier collapse, the next catastrophe is threatening Switzerland and the valley. Four more villages downstream of Blatten had to be evacuated because a massive flood wave threatens to come down once that massive dam that was created by that landslide might give way for the river. The river might crawl through that. It's only a matter of time. In that valley now, what they're hoping for, they hope for a little bit of luck in this big misfortune that happened. And that little bit of luck means do not send this massive flood wave all at once downstream to all these other villages. Do it in smaller, in smaller portions. But that's what they were already hoping that the glacier would do and the mountain would do. And it didn't do that. It all came at once and created this catastrophic event where authorities are saying we've never seen anything before. First, they said this is the catastrophe of the century. Now they're saying this is the catastrophe of a millennia. The Lonza River is dammed and how will the water from the Lonza River discharge? It can't create a lake forever. The riverbed is blocked and the resulting water reservoir slash lake is threatening to overflow. The safety currently for emergency services has not yet improved. The military is there with heavy machinery and waiting to get to work, but it cannot begin yet. The risk remains. It's too unstable. While they're hoping that the Lonza River will eventually, one way or the other, clear itself and find a way to release water downstream, the major issue remains, and that is the nature of this massive debris full of glacier rock and, and trees, everything. And they don't expect that glacier ice that's in there to melt that quickly. That's what they said today. So they say it will take months to find a solution. What to do with that? That's the big question. Because they're saying something like this has never happened before. So what is, they, they can't get back to some experience so it took us that and that long to transport the debris away should they rebuild Blatten in the same spot or not the other problem is this could not be all that is coming down we're still seeing continuous rock falls from the mountain the kleines nest one so more could come down who tells us that this was the only flank of the mountain that got loose and that will come down there could be way more that's coming down. And now from the other side of the valley, we have debris coming down because it was so massive how everything was even pushed on the other side of the hill, like an explosion. So what is the latest that we hear as of Saturday, May 31st in Switzerland? So the Swiss disaster area there, the damped waters of the Lanza River are initially flowing in an orderly manner. But the worst fears of a flood wave or a debris avalanche that could thunder into the Löschental, into the valley and endanger other villages has not materialized. Has it not materialized yet or will it not materialize? For the time being, it hasn't. So the officials are getting slightly optimistic. They're saying we don't expect anything more serious. That's what Christian Studer, the head of the National Hazards Unit, said at a press conference. But he also said, however, risks remain. Nature is kind of unpredictable. What they're seeing right now, if they look, and I'll, you see it in the pictures very soon. If you look at this debris, all this rocks, this dam that has been formed by that rock slide slash glacier slide. There's a first channel emerging where it looks like the Lanza River is carving its way through it. And the course of the water, how it looks right now, has given them optimism that the water is finding a good path. They have drone footage that shows like a trickle of water on this two kilometer, 1.4 mile long alluvial, monstrosity and water is also flowing further down the Lonza River bed. So this indicates that water is also seeping through the two kilometer long dam. It's underneath. It, water always finds its way. 
So because of that, they think that the immediate danger has decreased. There's experts that are flying repeatedly over the disaster area at an altitude of around 1500 meters, like a mile. Um, and they say, we don't see immediate danger to the villages further down the valley. That's a good thing. Will that remain like this? It remains to be seen. This is really unpredictable how this dam will behave with all the glacier ice in there, the rocks and other debris. And they're also saying that. They say it's difficult to assess how unstable debris how that unstable dam is changing because it can change in a minute. There's about 9 million cubic meters of material on the valley floor. One third is likely coming from the Berg Glacier, so it's ice. But he doesn't expect the material to melt very quickly. So if it melts, it creates more instability because then there's room gone right and and the other rocks and debris will will fall further down will that lead to more sliding down the river that's the big question but the experts they're making it clear today they see greater danger from further collapses on the mountain the kleinen kleines nest one at over 3000 meters so coming down from a height of 3000 meters and basically the same that has triggered the current disaster. The situation there up on the mountain, they're making it clear, remains unpredictable. The terrain is very steep. That is increasing the risk of further debris avalanches. Precipitation is also a concern for the experts. It rains a lot there in the summer. So severe weather is in the forecast for this area starting today. So that's a bad thing. One thing is clear, the entire village of Blatten is wiped out right now. Authorities are saying it's wiped out from the map because on Wednesday, after days of rock falls at an altitude of approximately 3000 meters, the big glacier below broke off because the weight was getting too heavy. All the rocks were landing on the glacier and then gigantic amounts of rock and debris were plunging into the valley below and it has completely blocked that Lonza riverbed. And the village of Platten, approximately 300 inhabitants, was almost completely buried initially under the debris. The rest of the homes was then flooded by the river. And thankfully, thankfully, the residents had already been evacuated to safety last week. But one resident who was in the disaster area on Wednesday is still missing, a 64-year-old man. What the Swiss president, Karin Keller-Sutter, said after a helicopter flight over the disaster area, she said it's incomprehensible that an entire village is wiped out. And she assured the residents of extensive support and the government and the authorities and all the rescue teams have made a great job. For two villages, communities further down the stream, the community of Gampel and Steg, they're located on the Lanza River about 20 kilometers below Blatten. First, they had issues evacuation orders, but now the situation has improved. But authorities are making it clear, nevertheless, the risk remains, even if it seems to be decreasing for these two communities right now. The residents were still urged to pack everything overnight, the bare essentials, in case that they would receive the evacuation order. And this would be necessary if a flood wave or debris avalanche from the disaster area were to roll down the valley. And it's so sad what the residents are saying. It's as if all the history of Blatten is erased. And between Blatten and these communities of Gampel, and that is interesting, lies a dam, a real dam, not the landslide dam. It's, it's called the Dam of Ferden. It's a dam in a retention basin. So they released water from the retention basin in the hope that the basin would be sufficient to hold the water if large volumes of water would drain quickly from the landslide area. Blatten's mayor, Matthias Bellwald, speaks of fateful days. He says the history of Blatten has been erased. 
However, the memories are still carried in the minds and the hearts of the residents. The people of Blatten, however, are looking resolutely to the future. We can no longer rebuild the old Blatten, but we want to rebuild Blatten. That's what he said. Where? It's impossible to say yet. The cleanup work is still too dangerous. The residents and the authorities are forced to wait and see. There is no way to direct the, the flow of the accumulated water, for example, by cutting a channel through the pile of rubble. The terrain is way too far unstable for that and people and machinery could collapse. So nobody can get on that. But the army is ready to begin clearing operation as soon as the situation will permit. And maybe, maybe initial operations on the outskirts of this disaster area may be possible soon. The problem is also that water reservoir, that lake that has formed right now, contains also a lot of debris from the flooded and destroyed houses, logs, trees were raced down with the landslide. So they want to build a driftwood retention area to prevent the outflow from becoming blocked again, especially if the outflow through that landslide area becomes a little larger. Disaster relief teams are saying it's unusual that the entire village was completely destroyed. We haven't seen anything like that before. It's extraordinary. So they're lining out three phases of disaster relief in the Lötschental. They will take place in three phases. In the next few days, emergency aid will be provided. All households affected by the natural disaster will receive a sum of money so that people can buy what's immediately important to them after the great loss. They have lost everything. And those affected, they can decide for themselves what they need. But one can only imagine that this could involve clothes, toys for children, for example. The people who had to leave their homes and lost their homes eventually, they had to find new accommodation. So therefore, a second phase of assistance is needed after that. The affected will be able to apply for amounts to cover additional costs resulting from such evacuation, such as additional rent. So this also includes transportation costs for longer journeys or if furniture needs to be purchased for temporary accommodation. These are losses that are unfortunately not covered by insurance. That's what they're saying. And then finally, a third long-term phase of assistance will involve covering the so-called residual cost. Residual costs refer to damages and losses that are not covered by insurance or any other entity. Now there's word from experts, from a glaciologist and a geologist, and he says, the landslide in Blatten is an event that has never occurred before in Switzerland. So what could probably have led to that landslide. It's what the expert is saying. It's an almost unimaginable mass of rock, ice, mud and water that has buried the village of Blatten and uh, the, the little area of Reed last Wednesday. What he makes clear is that the combination of ice and rockfall in Blatten is unique in its form. So it's basically, of course, it's a glacier collapse that was caused by a massive landslide coming from the peak of the Kleiner's Nesthorn. And the rock material has then pressed down on the glacier and has thrown it out of balance. That has never happened before. There are historic landslides in Switzerland, he says, that have buried entire villages like Goldau or Elm, which are similar. But the combination of ice and rockfall in Blatten is unique. The rockfall in Blatten brings back memories of the landslide in Randa in 1991. But a professor of glaciology, another one at the ETH Zürich, he points to the unique nature of that Blatten crash, how you can call it. He says melting ice played a decisive role. As soon as ice is present, he says, there's a lot of water and water acts like a lubricant. It lies between the debris and with the enormous pressure built up during a fall, this tremendous dynamic develops, which can, which can be clearly seen in the videos that we have received. So the water together with the debris formed a wobbly mass that slid far and expanded, like burying everything beneath it.
And both experts are telling us that it will be necessary to determine in the coming days whether there's a risk of further rockfalls. What the experts are saying, it is comparable to the cities that were wiped out by earthquakes and then rebuilt. Life has continued for generations. People believe in a better future and therefore I see a future for a new Blatten. Researchers from the ETH Zürich, from the university, they are saying the Birch Glacier has been moving for some time. They have published a fact sheet on the collapse of the Birch Glacier, where external factors or processes within the glacier triggered the collapse. The exact causes are still unclear, but the glacier has been monitored for years. Several rockfalls in the past and a landslide at the small nesthorn are likely the main triggers, yes, but the accumulated rock masses have definitely increased the pressure on the glacial ice. This favored the formation of meltwater at the base of the glacier and combined with the penetrating rain and the instability in these mountain areas. That's why the glacier was increasingly moving downwards and it had, but the whole thing was moving downwards and it had increased that speed. It had doubled it almost every day prior to the landslide. And so the lower part of the glacier then completely separated from the upper part of the glacier in the year 2000. So the glacier front of the lower Birch Glacier part had advanced approximately 50 meters by 2019. So the glacier collapse near Blutton bears certain parallels to the rock slide on Pizzo Cengalo in 2017. In that event, approximately 3 million cubic meters of rock crashed onto a glacier, partially sweeping it away, and it has triggered a debris flow. Bondo was severely damaged and eight people were lost. Something like this here has never seen before. The questions that everyone had or many of you had and I too, how many animals were buried when the glacier collapsed and the authorities are saying during the first and second evacuations, the animals were evacuated as best as possible. That's what the mayor of Blatten says. Exact figures on how many animals were buried are currently unavailable, but we saw the cow has been rescued with the helicopter. The question that arises for me still, and I know for you guys too, because I saw it in the comments, many people had been evacuated, so to speak, when they were at work in other areas, so they couldn't get home to get anything out. So what if you have a dog or a cat or whatever animal in your apartment or house and you couldn't go back? I would like to know were there some rescue helpers that took care of that? Because everything had to go so fast. That's my worry because sometimes I have to leave my doggies at home and gosh, I, I, I would have wanted to go back there and get them. So. As soon as I find out about that, I'll let you know, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave it a like. If you're new here, join our group, become a subscriber. If you want to support the channel, guys, I have a buy me a coffee site where you can buy me coffees. Leave me a message. I will answer with a 30 second video message and then you can video me back and we can see each other. Thanks for the supers you're sending me here as well. And shout out to all my channel members who are supporting the channel with a monthly membership. Thank you so much, guys. Stay tuned and check out the videos in the end screen. Very interesting stuff going on all over the world. I see you soon, hopefully safe and sound. Bye-bye.